Hey guys, welcome back to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. In this three-part video series, I'm going to go in great detail how I installed my rain catchment system. If you didn't catch part one and two of this series, the link for both those will be in the description below. So make sure you check those out. So let's pick up where we left off in the last video. You see this one fitting here. I put this the wrong way. Um, but water's still going to flow. It's just not going to flow as smooth. Um, this pipe is meant for the water to go in this direction. So I want this water to come this way. So this one should have went like that. But it's not going to cause any problems. It's just going to... Just doesn't look right. Somebody will call me on it, maybe, if they're picking up on stuff. What are my other mistakes? You! Peanut, shut up. That was my nicest joint I've done on this whole thing. That side, not so much, but that looks good. I'm nearing the end. Water comes in comes down this pipe, fills from the top, any overflow can fill from the bottom. The air will hopefully find its way to the vent to escape. When all the tanks are filled, the water will come straight down that pipe up here and back down and out of the house. I did the math and if I get two inches of rain on my roof, it'll fill these tanks up completely. Now I didn't do the math to see how much water I'll use in a day and how much rain we get in a year. So this is going to be my feed line. This is going to go down here. I put a cap on this end for now, but later I'm going to cut this pipe off and I'll uh, put, put an adapter on there. And this is where I'll begin doing the plumbing for the house. Uh, I'll have a filtration system, a water pump, and then that'll go to the on-demand propane hot water heater, or the cold waters will bypass that and it'll feed the house. If I ever need to drain the system, um, I need a place for it to, to uh, dump out at. So this is closed right now, so the system would be filled and it would be feeding the house. If I need to drain the tanks, I can turn this and all the water will, most of the water, I mean there will be probably a couple gallons in the bottom of the tanks, um, but most of the water will come down and it will drain down out of this, um, this hole that I'm about to put in here. So I made a mark and I marked it out. I'm, I'm in between the joists here. And I know I have a steel beam running right here, so there should be no obstructions here. I'm going to take a long drill bit and I'm going to get a center mark so I know where to cut it when I go underneath the trailer. Now since I got to cut this with a jigsaw, I won't be able to get up tight there. So I'm going to do a couple uh, large holes right there. That is pretty neat, I'll tell you. There's going to be a little over 70 joints in this rain catchment system. That's a lot of joints, man. Golly, dude. Whoa. This is like the never-ending story. I mean, come on. Golly. If the feds showed up right now, I'd be in trouble. I feel like when you see, like, Made in the USA, you know, the, the sticker was put on when it was in the U.S., but it was made in China. You gone done fucked up. This is my last fitting. Look at all that. All that careful work. And I'm a half inch off. <laughs> when I glued this fitting, I was make sure I, I was real careful not to have glue all the way into this because I didn't want that adhesive to come in contact with the ball valve. I was doing pretty good with uh, keeping the pipes semi clean until I spilt half the gallon of primer all over the pipes. This was the last piece I had to make. This is going to get put in on the outside of that tiny house uh, with that hose clamp right there so it'll be removable. Um, right here I'm going to have my stand pipe right here which is going to be a three inch PVC pipe and I'm not sure if I'm going to do PVC all the way up to the the roof or if I'm going to do like maybe four feet of PVC pipe and then I'll do metal gutters. I'm thinking since I don't want the transition I will, um, I'll probably do PVC all the way up. Uh, I'm going to spray paint this white so it looks prettier. But, you know, I can install it now and test it and make sure everything works. And, uh, you know, like I said, this is removable. So when I travel, my gutter's going to have to come off. My downspout's going to have to come out. And this is going to have to come off. i got to give it like an hour. I'm going to wait an hour and then I'll test it. But I'm going to start filling the tanks. So I got my garden hose, and I'm about to spend a couple bucks on 
220 gallons of water. Mother Golly, that sounds so sick. Oh, my drain's open, my floor drain's open. So the tanks are filling now. Um, this was open when I first turned it on and it was draining into the, uh, underneath the trailer, which I still need to divert. But I'll shut that and I'll let them fill up and hopefully, hopefully my 70 joints that I did are solid and I don't have any leaks. So it's definitely working properly. Uh, the water's definitely coming in here. You can hear it falling, so it's, it's filling from the top, but it's also letting the, um, the air escape. Now, I don't know how many gallons a minute my hose is pushing out, and I know if I had like a torrential downpour, um, that feed pipe could be completely filled, and if that pipe was filled coming in, um, I could see some gargling happening. But it's, it's always gonna vent out. It's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna be a major problem especially if I have like a five or six foot uh, standpipe on the outside, if that pipe filled with water completely, that pressure is gonna push the water down no matter what. They're all filling equally, obviously. You know, if I put a light bulb right behind that tank and I had a light switch right when you walk into the crawl space, you know, I just turn it on temporarily just to see how much water I have. Um, I'll have a light switch right here, I'll click it on. I can see where my water's at and shut it off. So you can see I'm about three quarters full. Still holding. There's a lot of weight in there pushing on these things. I'm really nervous about it failing. And if it fails, it's gonna be a boom and I'm just gonna have a flood in here. I'm gonna hang out in here. And hopefully when it reaches this point, my overflow valve will work and that'll be the last test. And I am right there. That is just cool, I tell you what. It's kind of ironic that it's actually raining outside, but I'm not catching the rainwater, that I'm filling it with a freaking garden hose. It's just getting to the bottom of the fitting here, so I'm almost at full capacity. God, that's a lot of weight. Oh my God. Can you imagine if it just... 2,000 pounds. My goodness. These were a good idea, these two by fours. My vent pipe is filling up with water. Now when that vent pipe gets to this point right here, my overflow is gonna engage, I guess you could say, but now the water, instead of filling the tanks, is gonna come up and it's gonna pour over and it's gonna start pouring down. That's freaking brilliant. Brilliant, I tell you. So there's the overflow and it's working properly. So I can shut my water off and let it sit. I knew when I was designing this system that I wasn't gonna get the, uh, the barrel full it's only going to go up to a certain point because of where this fitting is. This will always just be an air pocket, um, which you're probably looking at maybe 10, 20 gallons at the most. So I've got 200 gallons of water at least. Um, and I have no leaks in any of the fittings. I'm going to leave these tanks filled for several days before I do anything else. So the last thing I have to do is, is cut these pipes and attach other fittings onto it so I can divert that water to another location, possibly a secondary water tank for watering a garden or something like that. All my plumbing pipes on the bottom are going to be just like this. They're going to come down and I'm going to use these couplers on these two as well as the drains for the shower, the sinks, and all the other plumbing drains on the house. So I can remove all these pipes so I'm not worried about clearance when I'm driving. I don't have to worry about busting up pipes on the bottom. Everything will be removable down here. If I take one of these couplers and I measure half of it, it's uh, three and a half inches, so it'll be an inch and three quarters. So if I cut this pipe at an inch and three quarters, this thing will fit tight to the bottom of that plywood and the other fitting will go into it. So what I need to do now is cut these pipes at an inch and three quarters. All circular saws from the blade to this point right here is an inch and a half. So I'll just keep it down a little bit and uh, make my cut. Pretty was not the name of the game on that one. My goodness. Cut, cut here often. That shit was ugly. Oh, that was ugly, ugly. It's good to go. The only thing going through my head right now is copperhead snakes. Last night I had a baby copperhead in my basement of my house that I'm staying at. And so now I'm just freaking out. So when I install these fittings down there, 
this will be interchangeable. If I want the water to go out that way, it can. If I want to turn it and have it come this way and attach something later and have it run all the way out the other end of the trailer, I can. Or I can divert it with a 45 and I can send it pretty much anywhere with these. Now, if I take these two fittings and I put them in together like this, which is what they have to do, there's a difference in height here. And that difference between these two pipes is about an inch. So this 45, I want it to be tight to it. So I know it's going to go in three quarters and I need it to run up an inch and three quarters, which would make it, what, like two and a half. So this pipe's cut. Now I know I need to cut this one an inch longer than that one. So that was two and a half. So I'm going to cut one three and a half. Now I want these pipes to be tilted down just like a half inch because it's only about three feet, what's it, a quarter inch per foot, I think it was. So that's about two, three feet. So three quarters of an inch drop. I don't want that much. Since there's no solids running through this, I don't need to have that full pitch on it that standard pipes would have. Shorter one, longer one. I want the coupler to be an inch and three quarters in. I can tighten it down. Now I'm going to go put these on those two pipes and I'll get my length for this pipe. So I got my pipe cut and I'm just going to glue them on to those fittings. And there's the diversion. Go install that. Ow! See this is why I wanted removable because I mean yeah I'm, I'm lower than I need to be but that's almost eight or nine inches that it's hanging down so the fact that I can remove these I don't have to worry about this getting taken out by a pothole or something. A pothole? Do potholes just jump up and hit you? So now from here, I can divert this any which way I want to. Um, and it's also removable, so it's good. If you're going to build a system like this, you want to make sure that your vent pipe's your tallest thing. Uh, one thing I noticed is that I might not need this vent pipe because the air can escape out this right here because there's no there's no trap in it so the air will flow out it so this could potentially get sealed up later um, but for now I'm gonna leave it um, if you do have a vent pipe you wanna make sure your vent pipe is taller than your stand pipe so if the water coming in isn't going out this joint quick enough um, it'll overflow on the outside of the house and it won't overflow on this pipe here alright guys thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this three-part series if you're new to my channel make sure you hit that subscribe button if you liked the video and felt it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to show me some love, click right up there and show your support for Tiny House Customs. Also, leave your comments down below letting me know what you thought. Thanks for watching.